So now we're going to do the six steps to inferential statistics for our dependent T. And we're going to run through it and you'll see that very little has changed except how we do step four. So the six steps pretty much exactly the same and that's going to be the pattern for this course, but step four changed a little bit. All right. So let's say researchers wanted to know if they could change people's attitudes about socialized medicine. Socialized medicine is the concept of a kind of medical care for all. We all put into a big pot and then that pot pays for everybody's medical care. Eight individuals indicated their attitude towards socialized medicine before and after watching the Michael Moore's film, Sicko. So that film is really about socialized medicine and trying to show people the benefits of it. So those attitudes were assessed on a scale of one to seven, a higher score meaning more positive attitudes. So what we can see is when we look at the data, we have individuals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It could have even been names, Bob, Sue, Mary, Joe. And we have their score of how they feel about um, socialized medicine before and after watching the film. And so I just wanted to show you how the data would come through to us. And now we have these two data sets that come from people and we have to turn that into one sample so that we can apply our dependent t-test to it. So let's start with our research question. We want to know if does viewing sicko change attitudes about socialized medicine. Now notice they were wondering if Michael Moore's film would, ch would maybe improve or change their attitudes, but we don't have any previous research to justify a one-tailed test, so we're going to leave it as just change. So does viewing sicko change attitudes about socialized medicine? So if that's our research question, which one of these would be our null hypothesis? Viewing sicko increases favorable attitudes. Viewing sicko decreases favorable attitudes. Viewing sicko changes attitudes. Or viewing sicko does not change attitudes about socialized medicine. So you can pause the video if you want. And the answer here is D. So D would actually be the only answer here that works as a null hypothesis because all of the rest of these are directional and they don't include the no difference. Remember, null hypothesis is no difference. And so D is reflecting that no difference. Let's see if you'd feel comfortable doing this in symbols. So which one of these symbols would work if we're saying, does viewing sicko change one's attitude about socialized medicine? So you can pause the video if you want to think about it. Okay, the answer here is A, because we said, does viewing sicko change one's attitudes? It's a two-tailed test, so the answer here would be A. Well, since we're on this screen, which one of these answers would never work? So the answer for that um, would be that B would never work. B would never work because the equal to sign is in the alternative. It doesn't belong in the alternative. It has to be in the null. So it's in the wrong place. So B would never work. Is there another one that would never work? C would never work. So while we do have it in the appropriate place in the null, this equal to sign, it cannot be in the alternative. So C would never work. Now D would have worked if it were a one-tailed, lower-tailed test because the equal to sign is in the right place. But B and C would never work. However, for our two-tailed test, A is the right answer. So now we have steps one and two. We're gonna move on to doing step three. So step three is where we define our rejection region and we have to make sure we first calculate our degrees of freedom so we can read the table. Now remember, it's gonna be the, the pairs that we have minus one. So it's not the number of measurements because in this case we had four or no, 16 measurements, right? We had seven before and sorry, eight before and eight after. But we were really just interested in the units so that we have the data that we have for our one sample afterwards. So it's going to be the number of pairs minus one or the number of, in this case, because it's the same people, it would just be the number of people minus one. So since we had eight pairs of scores, it's going to be eight minus one, and that's seven. We only calculated one mean, and that's going to be the difference, uh, the mean of the differences. So that's why we lose one degree of freedom. So if I come to my table, I'm going to be on the two-tailed side of the table um, because we decided it's two-tailed. I'm going to be using the alpha 0.05. Remember, this is always where we start. 
And now I'm going to scroll down to degrees of freedom of 7, and I find that my T critical is 2.365. So that means that if I were drawing the picture, it would look something like this, where this T crit is at 2.365 and negative 2.365. Now, if you're defining the rejection region, you can't just say the critical value is 2.365 and negative 2.365. That's not a region. You've just given me two scores. So if you're going to define the rejection region, you'd have to say 2.365 and above and two, negative 2.365 and below. Make sure you define an actual region. So this is how steps one, two, and three would work. And notice for step three, I put this in words rather than a picture. But so far we're chugging along and we have the rejection region is greater than 2.365 or less than negative 2.365. And now we're gonna do the math. Now I showed you the table where we had all the scores and we could do the um, differences for each of those and calculate the mean difference and calculate the standard deviation of the differences. But this is where we're gonna have JASP do all the hard work for us. So let's go over into JASP and see how this would work. So we're going to use JASP. I'm going to use the browser version of JASP because some of you might be using that. If you have the downloaded version of JASP, you'll go ahead and grab the data set from the page that, you're, uh, that you got this video from. It's at the top of the page. But I'm going to go ahead and go through these steps. This is going to be review. I'm assuming you already know how to do this. So if something goes by too quickly, go check out the other videos on how to load JASP. But this is just kind of to help remind you. So I'm going to go to download JASP. I'm going to scroll down to launch JASP online. And I already have my account set up. Don't, rem don't forget to not click on the upgrade now. We want to launch on JASP with limited capabilities. And then while we're waiting for this to log in, I want to remind you that you're going to have to download the data set and put it into your Google Drive if you're using the browser version of JASP. So here's my browser version. Now I'm going to go find my file. So I'm going to click on file computer. I have already put my file in um, my uh, Google Drive. So here it's pulled up my access to my Google Drive. I'm going to click on that. Remember, it's kind of funky with double clicking, so you're just going to have to be patient and wait. Um, otherwise, you could get deep inside a folder and not realize how you got there. I know that I put my folder or my data in this folder called data. And this is just where I chose to put it. So it's class exercises because this is what we do in class. And I know it's under t-test because that's where I decided to put it. And I called it dependent t. Okay, so now I have the data set open and I just wanted to point out how the data look. Here are the numbers of the individuals. I actually don't need this in my data set. It's just for good uh, kind of housekeeping. And now I have the ratings before and after film. Now, whenever anything gets pulled over um, as a, from a CSV file or a file that hasn't been formatted, remember JASP always defaults it to being nominal. That's what these little um, Venn diagrams look like. And we wanna make sure that JASP knows that these are actual numbers. These are not numbers. This could have been names, individual Bob, Joe, and Mary. But these are numbers, and we, we won't be able to do the right math if we don't correct that these are numbers. So I'm going to go up and click on that Venn diagram and change this to scale. And actually, I think these are ordinal because of rankings, but um, for our purposes, we're going to analyze them the same, and I want to make sure you get in the habit of changing numbers to numerical things. So we'll treat these as though they're numbers so that we can analyze this appropriately. So now that we have that ready, which of these buttons up here do you think we're going to click if we want to do a dependent t-test? So hopefully you thought, hey, t-test works. So now we're going to click on paired sample t-test. That's what JASP calls it because it wants to remind you that these could be paired. And so now here's um, an important thing to note while setting this up. You always want to put the variable that interests you most or if it's a before and after scenario, you want to put the after in the box first. And the reason we're doing that is because it's doing after minus before. If we did before minus after, the number might come out negative if we improved, and that's kind of hard for us to wrap our heads around. It's better 
um, format to start with the after effect and subtract the before. So that way we know if it's a positive number, we went up. If it's a negative number, we went down. So it's really important to put those in that order. And um, I would also like to encourage you to scroll down and you can include descriptive so that you have mean data to look at. And so what I want to highlight is or draw your attention to is over here. So it was reminding us it did after minus before and then it went ahead and calculated our t value. So this is our calculated t that we would do in step four or I also call that our observed t. It's 4.733. Now it also tells us what our degrees of freedom are. It's seven. We thought it was seven, so that's nice that we agree. And now let's talk about this. This is called your p-value. It's such an important piece of this report that I actually have a whole separate video about what a p-value is. Um, so I want you to definitely check out that video. But for right now, what this is saying is what is the probability of getting a 4.733 or further out into the tails and since this number is less than 0.05, we know we can reject the null. In other words, any number, any time this number is less than 0.05, or 5% alpha rate, any time this number is less than 0.05, we're going to reject the null. But go ahead and check out that video so that you know what it is I'm talking about. But for right now, what we want to just do is take this 4.733 and put it back into our six steps. So let's do that now. So here are our first uh, three steps. Uh oh, this is misnumbered. This is three and this one is step four. I'm sorry about that. So step three is our rejection region and step four is, oh, I'm just noticing a typo. Let me see if I can just fix this real quick. Okay, sorry about that. I noticed I had the typo for our calculated T. So I just fixed it. So here we have our Step three is our rejection region greater than 2.365 or less than negative 2.365. And then our calculated T or our observed T is 4.733. So what you wanna think of now is where does that 4.733 fit in our rejection region? So based on where that fits in our rejection region, what are we gonna do about the null? Are we gonna reject the null, fail to reject the null, accept the null or accept the alternative. So you can pause the video if you need to think about it. And the answer is A, reject the null. So 4.733 was larger than 2.365. And the only other answer I would have accepted was fail to reject the null. That would have been if it was in between 2.365 and negative 2.365. Remember, we, were never, oh, sorry, we will never say accept the null or accept the alternative. So based on the fact that we rejected the null, what do I call grandma and say, hey, grandma, watching sicko changes one's attitude about socialized medicine, or watching sicko will not change one's attitude about socialized medicine, watching sicko will increase one's attitude to be more positive about socialized medicine, or do you think that both A and C are equally right? So you can pause the video if you need to think about it. So the answer here would be C, watching sicko will increase one's attitude to be more positive about socialized medicine. Now you may have thought A worked because we rejected the null and so then the alternative was saying it would change one's attitude. But remember, grandma won't be happy with us just saying we changed it. We need to make sure that we're really specific in saying where it, the change happened. So in this case, the only correct answer would be C. So we just did the six steps to inferential statistics for dependent T. And you'll notice that pretty much it stayed the same except for um, step four where we made JASP do the work. There's some more practice videos and check out that probability video so you can make sure you understand that well.